everybody, and welcome to the Minecraft Short Stories Podcast. In this episode, I have another listener story. This one is by CoolCat9175. And then after the story, there will not be a quiz or a mob trivia, as I have not been the best on keeping up on the quizzes, and I'd rather focus on something else than doing a quiz. The quizzes are not going away. The mob trivia may go away for a little bit, as I do not find that very interesting, and it's pretty monotonous. You could just go read the Minecraft wiki if you want to know the same things. So I'm going to stop doing that unless it's something really interesting. And then also on a side note, we're already at 40 subscribers on the Minecraft Short Stories and Minecraft Spook Stories YouTube channel. We are almost halfway to 100 sub goal. And way before the start of 2024 on that. And I was thinking, why would people want to subscribe or listen to any of the podcasts on the YouTube channel when they obviously already know about the podcast and can listen to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts? Well, there's one main difference with the YouTube version. There's no ads on it. So if you don't have Spotify Premium and you want an ad for experience, there's always the YouTube channel. So I'm just saying... That's a reason to subscribe. But, let's get right into the story. Sorry in advance, I have a cold today, so my reading may not be the clearest, but hopefully it's fine. This story does not have a title. It is by CoolCat9175. Illagers are different from any common villager. Power drives them to insanity. But before it ceased power, life was, well, not at its best. Where did my story of power start? On a quiet evening, when my sister, who had returned home slightly late from selling our small supply of wheat, was being a bother, as usual. Growling, I shoved my carrot into my mouth as Penelope stuck her tongue out at me. Every time Mom turned around, Penelope was as sweet and innocent as ever. It drove me crazy. But my sister was nothing compared to my considerably rude neighbors. Every day, when we trade the baker some milk, just getting to his house and bakery is a nightmare. The villagers scorn and shun me, and being the smallest of them with strange gray skin and large black eyes like my mother, the way they towered over me was terrifying. But the villagers, and even Penelope, were the least of my concerns. Our small pile of emeralds was dwindling, and my mother radiated uneasiness, though she tried not to show it. Pouring the last of my tasteless beetroot soup into my mouth, I mumbled, good night, before shuffling off towards my bed with a hurry. Too many depressing thoughts for my liking. Popping into bed, I let out a sigh of relief. Phew, another humiliating day was over. The next day had come in what seemed like seconds, and walking into the kitchen revealed my mom already making breakfast. Mom, what's wrong? I asked, my nose swinging wildly as she rushed past me. Oh, I just thought an early breakfast would be nice, she murmured hurriedly, placing bread and milk on the table, avoiding my eyes. Gathering an expensive pile of emeralds up in her arms, she sprinted for the door, her long nose swinging back and forth until she was gone, her gray skin hidden behind her silky black hair flying over her shoulder. Mother, I cried, chasing after her to the front door. What's going on? Why are you yelling, Archie? Penelope yawned, rubbing her eyes. Ignoring her, I ripped the door open, squinting at my mom until she entered a building. It took me a second to realize that it wasn't just any building, it was the library, home of the librarian. What was she doing in there? The only thing you could find in there was books. We didn't need books. We needed those emeralds for food. What in the overworld was my mom doing? I wanted to go in after her, but my sister said no. Would you really abandon me, Archie? She stuck her lip out, planting her hands on her hips. Sighing, I said, no, I suppose not. Picked up my bread, watching it half-heartedly. Oh, don't worry, Archie. She'll be back in a couple of minutes, I'm sure. She'll have a dozen books to cheer us up. As they say, knowledge can feed a million mouths, don't they? A few days had passed, and Mom still had not come home. She had abandoned me out of misery. What was I supposed to do? Where was my mother? Oh, I missed her so much. For some reason, the wheat seeds wouldn't get in the dirt, and the old cow in our pen was producing less and less milk every day. Their sheep's wool was coarse and dry, and the baker did not like the quality of the milk, so we were without emeralds. We were starving, too. I was really, really wishing Dad was still here, since he was the shepherd of the village, 
and now the village needed us to do his job. I realized I had to ask Penelope for help, and sighed. I admitted to her that I couldn't support the family by myself, and reluctantly asked her for help. Smirking, she said sarcastically, I would love to, and showed me how to sow the farmland. We finally had food, which meant our cow could produce good quality, our sheep's wool would be worth some emeralds, and we had a steady flow of emeralds coming into our laps. I guess Penelope was useful. Weeks had passed, and there's still no sign of Mom. I was ready to believe she would never come back, and we would have this responsibility on our shoulders for the rest of our lives. But then, an idea struck me. Maybe I could find my mother, or at least figure out what she was doing. I told my plan to Penelope, it would become much less annoying since there was no one to see her pretense of innocence. A gleam of hope shone in her blue eyes for the first time in a month. Sprinting down the road, I trained my eyes on the path, ignoring the jeering villagers. It didn't matter what they thought about me. It only mattered that I located my mom. Finally, I reached the library, and looked up to see the librarian staring curiously at me from behind his lectern. Where is the book my mother bought? I demanded. The librarian tilted his head. But come on, everyone knows her. Where was, what was the book called? He continued to stare quizzically at me through his half-moon red-rimmed glasses that saw on the edge of his nose. Sighing, I slapped a stack of emeralds, the last for a stash on his lectern, challenging him to speak. His aged, wise blue eyes widened as he realized how serious the small young villager was. I said, where is the... A scraggly old voice interrupted me. She went on a quest for something. Or perhaps someone. The librarian whispered. She seemed so desperate. I couldn't bring myself to tell her no one has ever returned from that adventure. But what was she looking for? Legend says it gives the holder anything they can dream. Except this great power comes with a price. However, no one has ever gone their hands on it, so the expense is unknown. The heroes of the ages, Steve and Alex, never found it, so who's to say it even exists? He let out a hearty chuckle that hinted at guilt. The book, please, I repeated. The librarian looked down at the little young me, his eyes shining with fear as a square tear slid down his cheek. His lip trembling, the librarian stuttered. I may or may not have given Esme the wrong map. Leaning against his lectern, he slid down and curled into a ball before finally bursting into tears, shaking as he tried to hide from shame. But I didn't have the kind of patience for a villager like him. Running towards the bookcase, I stared up until I found the space where the librarian had removed the book. Squinting, I glanced up at the category where the book had been. When it finally came into my view, I felt the overworld melt away. The librarian's racking saw was faded until it was just me and the category. Blinking, I tried to see if it was a trick of the light, but no. The bolded word stood out like a brown mushroom in the sea of red. Pulling myself out of my stupor, I screamed to the librarian, You sent my mother to the nether? It wasn't me, he sobbed. I'm not sure what it was, but it wasn't my fault. Some mysterious shadow poured in through the window into my door, and it floated towards me. Until it, it was me. I absorbed it like experience orbs. My thoughts were all messed up. I wanted to pull one of the books off a shelf in the hidden library just behind this wall. But then I came to my senses and said, no, that's an evil book. I don't even know why I own this. The conversation went on for a few minutes until finally, the darkness strengthened and my vision was torn from me. I sank down, I sank deep down to the abyss of my body, unable to move from fear of the horrifying sensation of sinking and losing control of my own body. Eventually, the curse seemed to have lifted. I was conscious of holding a book and a blurry figure that slowly came into focus was standing just in front of me, on the opposite side of my lectern. When I tried to lift my arm, I, I felt the darkness return, pushing against me in my feeble attempts at control. It must have looked quite strange to your mom to see a villager fighting with himself. Confused as I spoke, the words were distorted, but eventually the message th came through to me. The book, please, sir? The shadow forced me to give her the book and with a gentle wave of goodbye, she strode out the door, as if that book was the key to her happiness. At last, it left me alone, gliding out of the library as smoothly and stealthily as I had come in. I collapsed on the floor, writhing like a victim of a cave spider. I tried to pull out my milk bucket, but it did not help. It was then that I realized that, had infected me with the, that hadn't affected me with a debuff. It was simply the fact that I was more frightened than any villager has ever been. Can you forget, ever forgive me, son of Esme? He glanced up at me from a sitting position, pleading for forgiveness. 
My mother was dead because of him. This fact would not leave me as I tried to decide if forgiveness would be appropriate. Sighing, I mumbled. I'm known as Archie in our cottage. And yes, I do forgive you. But you should never understand how hard this is for me. I mean, I've been rejecting disrespect in my entire life. And my mother is dead. How am I supposed to forgive the villager that took away my mother's life? The villager that stood on the side the whole time when the rest of the village, even our golem, ne neglected me and ridiculed me. I felt my voice rising with anger. I don't care what imaginary force made you give my mom the book that led her to her doom. You kill my mother and you will pay for that. Bring her back. I felt the tears streaking down my face. Closing my eyes, I punched the librarian. The old man grunted as he flashed red with damage. My anger smiled, satisfied that someone else felt my pain. I punched again and again, feeling the twisted satisfaction coursing through my locky veins. An unnoticed shadow slipped quietly into the room, feeling the hatred and anger I emitted. My fury was so extreme, I barely felt a difference as it disappeared into me. I had punched him almost twenty times, and I knew he was almost dead. Shaking, the librarian curled up underneath me. I raised my fist to punch one more time, then the murderer. Suddenly, I felt the anger ebbing away, and the shadow was there, encouraging me, trying to feed my blazing fire of anger. I realized what I was doing a moment too late. Just as the shadow gathered up enough strength to completely possess me, put me into an uncontrollable state of destruction, my fist was already falling to defeat the poor, helpless librarian at my feet. Thank you guys for listening, and thank you for Cool Cat 1975. And thank you to Cool Cat 9175. Make sure to go subscribe to the Minecraft Stores YouTube channel. Link inside the description. And I will see you guys inside the next episode.